Hi there, I'm Matt Easton. Let's have a little look at the five worst fantasy swords. Before we get into my top five worst fantasy swords, I'm going to give an honourable mention to 1985's Red Sonja. I don't deem it worthy of being in the top five, but Red Sonja's sword is pretty damn awful. It has to be said some of the swords in Red Sonja are not too bad. There are some swords which look very much like Chinese Dao and various other um, sword types that we might recognise. And in fact, it's not surprising perhaps that they chose to furnish Lord Kalidor, that is Arnold Schwarzenegger's character, who is in a way quite Conan-like, with a sword which is extremely similar in outline to his sword from Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer. But when we get to Red Sonja's own sword, well, what went horribly wrong here? We can't, we can only really guess, we can't know, but um, there's something terribly wrong with the hilt in particular. The guard is extremely large and plasticky looking, very very gold, and has a large kind of semicircle or tulip shape at the base of it. Now, for many reasons this is a bad idea. First of all it adds a large amount of weight to the sword, exactly where you don't really want it. A guard like this will be extremely difficult to make match up with any type of scabbard and will change the point of balance, so either in wearing it or in wielding it. It's going to feel very strange in the hand as you have a large amount of mass just in front of the cross guard, not in the blade so it doesn't really assist you with hitting the other person. I suppose in some ways we could say it's somewhat similar in outline to an actual historical feather or fedeshvert. Um, but of course those are steel and they're not particularly heavy in this portion of the blade around the ricasso. This large lump of gold or gilded metal is going to add a lot of mass exactly where you don't want it. The whole thing's made slightly more ironic by the fact that Red Sonja herself actually chooses this sword out of a large selection of swords. This one sings to her and and uh, she decides that this is the sword for her. So really displaying that not only does she have terrible taste in the look of swords, but additionally she's picked a sword which functionally is not going to be as good as several of the other swords which were on offer. In at number five is 1991's Hook, and particularly Peter Pan's sword. Now, <laughs> Robin Williams playing Peter Pan, what is his sword all about? It's got a hilt that's a bit like part of a cup hilt from a cup hilt rapier. It has a blade that's like a sort of narrow gladius. It's just a weird old combination thing. I'm not really sure what their inspiration was other than perhaps the Disney movies about Peter Pan which had preceded the movie Hook. Um, so essentially it seems like when they went to design a sword which should have had some basis in history at least, at least you know one of the common types of sword that could have been used by pirates in the 17th or 18th century. No, instead of using any of those types of sword, for example rapiers, hangers, basket hilted broadswords, um, dusaks, instead they went and they made up a sword which has no basis in reality whatsoever and it's a terrible design. It's short, it's going to be poor at cutting, not very good at thrusting because it's fairly short and used without a shield, massive disadvantage. It doesn't have a very good handguard, only having a cup hilt with no uh, knuckle bow or cross guard. And to make things worse, his opponent, Captain Hook, has a proper sword. He has a basket hilted broadsword. Poor old Robin Williams has to make do with this shoddy attempt at a sword, at a pirate sword, presumably. I don't really know what they were thinking of when they designed it. And his opponents all seem to get more or less decent swords of various sorts. I won't say that they're perfectly historically accurate, but this is a fantasy film. So should we be judging swords based on historical accuracy? Well, no, actually. I don't think we should, but nevertheless, a sword should make sense. And they could have given him something along the nature of a, a rapier or a small sword or a transitional rapier. But instead they gave him this weird hodgepodge thing that's neither one thing nor another. So terrible sword. Bad job, Hook. Let's move on to the next one. In at number four is the Sword of Godric Gryffindor from the Harry Potter movies, first appearing in the Chamber of Secrets. This sword is just all wrong. The problem is the sword as shown in the movies is an 18th century court sword. At best we could say it's a 17th century so-called pillow sword, but the fact is it's a dress sword of the 17th or 18th centuries. Whereas Godric Gryffindor himself was a person who lived in the 10th century. He was one of the four founders of Hogwarts. 
Now, the problem there being that swords in the 10th century were extremely different to what they were like in the 17th and 18th centuries. Could this have been an advanced design? Well, no, that doesn't really make any sense either, because quite simply, swords in the 10th century were used pretty much always with a shield, and they were wide chopping blades. The so-called Viking era, which is when the 10th century was, is very characteristic of these broad so-called Type 10 cutting blades. And no part of the sword shown in the Harry Potter films as the sword of Godric Gryffindor could in fact come from the 10th century. The blade is completely wrong, the cross guard is completely the wrong shape, the grip and pommel are equally completely wrong. It's just a, just utterly the wrong, wrong type of sword. Now, you could say maybe the sword of Godric Gryffindor takes different forms in order for the person who's going to wield it, because we know that it appears in a time of need. Even if we accept that excuse, I still think that they missed a trick because we have this established history and timeline for Hogwarts and for the character Godric Gryffindor. Even his name is Anglo-Saxon, so he should have an Anglo-Saxon sword. Any, any minor researcher worth their salt would simply be able to type Anglo-Saxon sword into Google and immediately see swords of the right type and see that they look utterly different to the sword as presented in the movies. So, number four, worst fantasy swords, the sword of Godric Gryffindor. In at number three, we have The Hobbit. For five worst fantasy swords, I've put The Hobbit at number three, but specifically, you might be thinking that I'm going to say Orcrist here, and I'm not. I'm actually going to say The Swords of Killy and Philly. The fact is that Orcrist itself is not a terrible sword. It's actually quite similar to some historical swords, and therefore does make sense. Uh, it is somewhat like what we would call a falchion, and looks a little bit reminiscent of something like the Con falchion in design and actually its proportions are not too bad I, I, I have to admit I think it's a fairly handsome design but the swords of Killian Philly are utterly ridiculous not only do they not make any sense functionally and I'll come back to that point in a second but they are extremely ugly now I do understand that the people making the Lord of the Rings films wanted a certain look to the dwarves the dwarves have geometric shapes on their armor architecture and weapons. So that undoubtedly is the reason that they've gone with very geometric, almost architectural forms in the swords of Killy and Philly. But the end result are weapons that make no sense and really would be extremely inefficient. I'm not going to say they wouldn't work as weapons because let's face it, a brick works as a weapon, anything works as a weapon um, if you want it to. But the fact is that as swords, these are terrible designs. They've got very nasty um, inefficient thrusting points. They've got edges which would only conspire to make your cuts less effective instead of more effective. They would hinder cutting through clothes or armour or flesh and they would also not be practical in terms of putting in and out of scabbards. So the swords of Killy and Philly, terrible, terrible designs and would make terrible weapons and their proportions are also pretty horrible as well. In at number two, we have Highlander. How could I possibly not have had Highlander in the top five? And we have to accept that whilst this is loosely set in a period of history, and I should hasten to add very historically inaccurately, um, it is basically a fantasy film, and so I do think it's worthy to fit within the top five worst fantasy swords category. Now, you might be thinking, which sword is he going to pick from Highlander? There are so many, because obviously it's a film about sword fighting people. But there are a few candidates that jump out. First of all is Connor's own sword, the sword he starts with, the cross-hilted sword, long sword that he has in the Highlands. This is a pretty ugly design, but that being said, whilst it's not very historically accurate, it's not terrible. Um, the, the flap over the guard, which would normally be at some, what was sometimes called a rain guard or a chap, um, is pretty ugly, and the way McLeod is written on it is very, very cheesy. Um, but no, that's not what I'm picking. So you're going to think, oh, well, he's going to mention the katana, the katana that was invented a long time before katanas existed with the kind of ivory or bone handle. No, I'm not going to pick that either because it is loosely similar to, it's almost like the bastard love child of a dar and a katana. 
So no, I'm not gonna pick that either. So you guessed it, there is only one obvious candidate remaining, and that is the Kurgan sword that is made up of numerous parts that conveniently fit into a briefcase and slot together. Why would you want it to do that? Why couldn't you just carry it in a longer case? I don't know. The fact is, to try and make a functional sword that's slotted together in the blade like this, it's just not gonna happen. It's gonna end up um, handling rubbishly as a sword, probably it's gonna fall apart in combat. Just a terrible, terrible idea, but, the main reason it's made its way into number two slot in my list is because the design is absolutely god-awful. My word, that's ugly. There are so many historical swords they could have used as an inspiration. They could have given him something like a 16th century so-called zweihander or two-handed sword, and that would have looked awesome, especially if it had a wavy blade, so-called flamberge blade, and it um, had the um, subguards further down on the Ricasso. And I suspect that that was the inspiration for the Kurgan sword, but they just got it all horribly wrong. The guard looks like it's a massive great lump of stainless steel that's been CNC'd out of some bit of kitchen equipment. Um, those spikes that like flick out from the guard, like why would you want it to do that? It has no practical benefit whatsoever. The grip, it looks very cylindrical to me. The pommel is just a, just a horrible basic ball. I have to say the blade is not too bad, but overall, Given the fact that we're actually given details about how this sword is constructed and slots together out of pieces, um, as well as the design being horrifically ugly as well, I think that's why it has worked its way into my number two slot. And I would also say the two other reasons why it deserves to be number two in my eyes are because it's supposed to be set in a period of history. It, although it is loosely a, a fantasy film, it is supposed to be historical to some degree. And so it should have been a historical sword design and it doesn't look in place in any period whatsoever. And at number one place, there could never be any choice for me. It's 1982's The Sword and the Sorcerer. And, you know, there are so many bad swords in this movie, but obviously the, the sword used by the hero is the obvious one to pick on with its three blades, um, two of which can shoot out. Uh, it's just unbelievable. It has to be seen to be believed. Feel free to, um, in fact, right here on YouTube, you can go and type in the sword and the sorcerer and have a look for yourself. It's quite, quite incredible. Um, the design of the sword is fairly horrible in every way. It would be a terrible, terrible um, close combat weapon. The blades themselves are very clearly heavy and don't shoot with very much force. But even if we take it as a missile weapon, you're, you're initially, unless you shoot off the two blades either side of the main one in the center, you have an incredibly heavy and unwieldy weapon that would be extremely ineffective in cutting or thrusting or just being able to defend yourself with or fight with. It's a terrible design. Um, it looks hilariously bad. Um, terrible design for being able to carry around remember that a sword is a sidearm and should be easy to carry um, but additionally to this the sword and the sorcerer has a bunch of other really horrifically ugly uh, weapons in it but should we be surprised it is a terrible terrible film and I confess I've never managed to watch the whole thing all the way through um, we also just to add in that some of the weapons have flip out blades and other bits um, spring loaded blades and in fact, the main protagonist's sword, as well as having two shooting blades, has a blade that pulls out of the pommel as well. It really, there's not much more I can say about this sword. It is so terrible, it is so bad, and I do understand it's essentially supposed to be funny, or at least I hope it is, but there's absolutely no question that it earns its place in the number one slot for the worst fantasy sword of all time, so far. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.